outside. 12 months ago, Welsh rugby legend Gareth Alfie Thomas took on his biggest challenge yet. Training a team of 16 fun-loving but totally unfit ladies to run the Cardiff Half Marathon. OMG. It was 16 weeks of pure purgatory. But in the end, all 16 of Alfie's angels crossed that finish line. We did it! And now, one year on, glutton for punishment Alfie's back for second helpings. But this time, I'm gonna supersize it. Because this year, just to make life even harder on himself, he's going to try and train not one, not two, but three teams of angels to run the Cardiff Half Marathon. So will that mean three times the fun? <laughs> or triple the trouble. Oopa, oopa. Will Alfie's latest clutch of angels raise him up to heaven? <laughs> or drag him down to hell? No, he's <laughs> just cool. I was having a fight. Well. Oh, you did put them in there. Well, well, so well. You won't be doing this by the end of it. You will give up. <laughs> Gareth Alfie Thomas is a living legend with a life full of firsts. He was the first Welsh rugby player to 100 caps, the first openly gay international sports star, and then just last year came his crowning achievement when he became the first sporting gay icon with 100 caps to persuade 16 reprobate Welsh women to ditch the fast foods the fags and the booze and successfully trained to run the Cardiff Half Marathon. But having reached this pinnacle in life, how is Alfie to top last year's triumph? Simple. He's going to do it again. But this time, it'll be bigger, bolder, barmier. Gareth Thomas here. Have you ever fancied running a half marathon but think you're so unfit, so out of shape that you never can? In May of this year, Alfie put an online shout-out to the people of Wales. I'm looking for 100 Alfie's Angels. So if you're a member of the public who has never run a half marathon before, but would be keen to train over this summer, and if you can form a team of five people, I'd love to hear from you. Hi, I'm Heidi. I'm Susan. I'm Siobhan. I'm Jill. And I'm Jo. And, and we, we want to be, be Alfie's Angels. In his search for a hundred new angels, Alfie asked for a short video from every interested team telling him why they wanted to take part. Never run it before, always wanted to, but always had a little bit of cushion. And soon the applications began flooding in. Hi Alfie! We want to be Alfie's angels because Alfie is awesome. Alfie is lovable. Alfie is fit. Alfie is inspirational. Alfie is enthusiastic. And Alfie is our... Superhero! Oh, they give me goosebumps. Hello, my name's Ellen. This year I'm celebrating 10 years since my heart transplant. Oh, wow. Uh, my consultants say that I need to aim to run a marathon. In fact, Alfie received over 70 videos from all over Wales. Some of them were very funny. We're just waiting for our fifth member now, who's always running late. Here she comes. Oh. Oh, God, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> Some were slightly alarming. Hi, my name's Roxanne. I need your help. A typical day in my life consists of McDonald's for breakfast, Burger King for lunch, and McDonald's again for dinner. And if I continue down this road, I'm going to end up like this. So please pick me and help. And some were just downright bonkers. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word, that is amazing. That is brilliant. That is truly, truly brilliant. Alfie now had a bit of a dilemma. 78 teams had applied, but he could only pick 20 of them to make up his 100 angels. Please pick us. Alfie, please pick us. Hmm, so what was he to do? Please pick us. You really won't regret it. Yeah, one, two, three, four, can you hear me? Well, there was only one fair way out of his predicament. 
to draw names out of a hat. Team number seven, the Who Are The Hobblers. Just to make sure he wasn't cheating, it was all recorded live for the BBC Wales Facebook site. It's Team 37, the Sofa Surfers. Once the 20 chosen names had been pulled from Alfie's bobble hat, there was one very important task left. To reveal which three teams he would be following with the TV cameras, up, close and personal, throughout their 16-week training programme. In the end, there were three teams that stood out for Alfie, each for different reasons. My name's John Morgan, I'm 34. Um, I want to do it because I'm getting married next year and I don't want to be a fat on the bread. <laughs> Team number one are five nurses and healthcare assistants working on Ward 12, the acute medical ward of Royal Glamorgan Hospital in the Rhondda. I chose the Royal Glam nurses because I thought they were a real cohesive, good group of people, but I thought they'd spend so much time looking after everybody else, they'd kind of forgotten about themselves and let themselves go. Team number two. We're a group of mums from Teguin School. Um, we've all got disabled children and life is incredibly difficult for all of us. The T. Gwyn mum's children all attend the same special needs school in Cardiff. I chose the T. Gwyn mums because I think they're an amazing group of women. I think from the moment they wake up in the morning till the moment they go back to bed, they're looking after other people. Hey, buddy. And if anybody deserves to have something done for themselves, then it's this group of women. And last, but by no means least, we are the girls from Pro Nails. We can only run like snails. We will do our best to run like the rest. But we're only good at tanning the nails. <laughs> Team number three, the Flying Filers. Five batty beauticians from Haverford West. I chose the Nail Bar Girls because I think they bring something completely different to the other two teams. They're very lively, they're very outgoing, but also I think underneath the makeup, I think underlying, there's something else and I want to find out what that is. So, three different teams in three parts of Wales, and only 16 weeks to turn them into athletes. Time Alfie paid each a visit to find out what makes them tick. Alfie's first stop, the Royal Glam Nurses. On their feet all day, working 12-hour shifts up and down those corridors and wards, they must be as fit as a flock of butcher's dogs. Or not. My fitness regime, I'd say, is quite poor. Oh, my fitness is terrible. Well, my fitness regime is zero at the moment, to be honest. Don't do anything. I'd probably walk the dog, that is the most exercise that I get. As for exercising, I say I go as fast as take my dog for a walk, and that's about it. And exercise is not the only issue. I skip meals a lot and then just eat junk food. I class myself as being overweight. I'd like to lose a little bit of weight. I have tried dieting many times. It doesn't last. Not that the nurses are wholly to blame. Many of our patients or relatives, when they leave, they often give us boxes of chocolates. We have cakes, chocolates, biscuits. Sometimes the same person fetches four boxes of biscuits in. And of course you've got to eat them. <laughs> By the end of the day, it's like two tins of biscuits gone and two boxes of chocolates. You know, and then you think, oh my God, do we just eat all of that? <laughs> so, five unfit, life-saving cookie monsters. Over to you, Alfie. <laughs> you look like a bunch of naughty school girls who've done something wrong. Right, let's get down to business. Who's the ringleader of this? Michelle. Michelle, are you the one who put it up for you? Well, sort of. We saw the poster in the office, me and Sarah. Right. And we were like, yeah, let's do it. She was more up for it than me, I've got to be honest. Right. And then we wrote the other girls in. Yeah. And what did you think when they asked you then? Yeah, I was really up for it. Yeah? Yeah, really. What about you? 100%. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, so sure. Uh, no, no. no. <laughs> Why is it? Is it? Is it a fear of exercise? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> exercise scares a lot of people. See. Definitely. Yeah. What's your uh, history of exercise? I had to do it, but then I had to quit. Oh, is it? Mm -hmm. Oh, so you get to a certain stage and then you stop going. Yeah. I'm excited, I'm just buzzing for it. <laughs> so do, you, do you bounce off each other? Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you bounce off them? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bless her. I'm feeling her fear, yeah? I'm feeling her fear. Introductions to the bouncy, giggly, nervous nurse is over. I do you up? Yeah, do me up, lovely. It's time for Alfie to work the wards 
and get to know them a little better. Ready? I'm ready, yeah. We are only making a bed, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just get that right. That's good. First task, changing 28 beds with angels Zoe and Joanne. Where the bedside news flash is that mum of two Joanne has just got engaged. Wait a minute. <laughs> you can't just chuck that in. You're getting married. I got engaged at the beginning of the year, yes. Okay, so is so this some, is this a motivation? Is it yes? Yes, definitely. For for being fitter? Yeah. 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 Do you have like a target? Well, I've, I've always sort of gone by how how I weigh and things, and it's never really worked out to me because I, I lose the weight and I put it straight back on. Right. But I never I've never worked out to there. I've only just dieted. I've always yeah. been afraid of exercise. Ah, right. Okay. Fellow mum of two, Zoe has also got some refueling issues. So, how do you feel your lifestyle is as far as your diet goes? Terrible. Yeah, I, I, I miss breakfast, I miss dinner, and then I just have like something for tea, and then I'm snacking then all night because I haven't had nothing for breakfast and for dinner. Do you know if patients came in who had lived exactly the same way that you live your lives? What advice would you give them? We'd for tell them, them off, we'd say you yeah. must eat breakfast, yeah. you must eat <laughs> dinner, and you yeah. must make sure yeah. that you drink. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, John. Out on the rounds, it seems that confidence is the issue for Angels Lee and Sarah. What are these girls like with you, bud? Absolutely fantastic. Yeah? And they've got a steely determination, so which is good for when they run this race. It's very good for yeah, when they run it. Absolutely. absolutely. What do you reckon, lovely? Is he right? I think so. Sure. <laughs> See, now, this moment, no now this one, this, this one seems very scared. I don't know if she's scared of me or scared of the prospect of doing it. Lacking confidence and essential nutrients, Alfie's worried the Royal Glam nurses won't have the stomach for a marathon. What does team leader and deputy sister Michelle think? Our diets are rubbish. Right. We will be honest. Right. And obviously we've got to change our diet plan and we've just got to get there. And yeah. Bit we want to do it. Yeah. It's just, we've got lazy and we've just got into the routine. Okay, that's the challenge. Yeah. Alfie's next port of call is Haverford West, where a nondescript industrial estate on the outskirts of town conceals the poshest parlour in Pembrokeshire. Yeah. <laughs> Here, the beauty therapists of the Pro Nails Beauty Salon offer everything from colourful cuticles to luscious lashes. For a bit of a laugh, five of the beauticians applied to be Alfie's angels and sent him a cheeky little rap. As long as we don't break a nail, we will eat the curly kale and maybe run faster than a snail! But now that they've been chosen, it appears the joke's on them. Well, I just don't know what I've let myself in for. I don't want to do it. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous, to be honest. I'm dreading the training and being put through assault courses. I hate it. I don't like hurting. I drink, I smoke, and I'm a nail technician. I'm a beautician. I'm not somebody who goes out and does running. Like, we have to actually run the marathon, the half marathon. I can't visualise that yet. In order to help them visualise their predicament and Alfie's impending arrival, the ladies take some Dutch courage and hit the hacker. Come on, this is private, it's okay. We are wild. We really are wild. We're a fun bunch and we are a good team, so he's going to have a lot of fun with us. We're ready to shock Alfie, I think. He thought he was going to surprise us coming in, but we're actually going to surprise him. <laughs> oh, here they are! <laughs> oh, they got a little dance as well. Hey, he's with us. Good one. <laughs> Wow, there's a surprise. <laughs> so you are? I'm Kat. Kat. Angela. Angela. Betsan. Lisa. Right, OK. <laughs> so where are we at, girls? Because you all look super fit, I must admit. We are far from fit. <laughs> oh, really? Far from fit. I don't even own trainers. Oh, right, OK. Genuinely, so Lisa does no running at all. I'm knackered from just being <laughs> <in> there. <laughs> you walked it well, old girl. Yeah. You walked it well. Can oh, I just yeah. touch your face? Yes, it's the one. What? What's the matter? I just can't believe that you're, you're here. Real. All right. Weird. No, I'm you, lovely, and I'm real. I used to watch you on the telly, like you were the 
legend. Oh, wow. And like you're standing here, it's yeah. like I'm a bit, you're like the David Beckham. Oh, of do you know the what? Be with. Seriously, probably within like the next 20 minutes, I you'll be you. so over that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be over there. It's like, like, shut up, Alfie. Well, I'm done now. Trust I'm me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fine. yeah we had no, drank no. about half a bottle of Pims before you arrived, so. Oh, oh right, Yeah, okay. just to get a couple of swigs in there. Right. Oh, because I didn't know if I could smell a smoker in you, or oh, it was the poppers that were going off. So. How many smokers all together? And there's three. three. Girls, do you realise this would be doing like a lifestyle change, do you think? Yeah, can I drink on weekends? <laughs> Listen, everything is moderation. We haven't come to like totally you change your life. We've Just come to make your life better, we hope. Do you drink? <laughs> yes. Ah! What do you think? I do everything in moderation, but I train okay. extremely hard as well. Yeah. So at the end of the marathon, we'll have a drink together. Oh, at the end of the marathon, we'll have a big, big party. That's exactly yeah, what we want. A big party. Yeah. But before there's any party, there's going to have to be a heck of a lot of hefting. And are these lush ladies really ready to get their exquisitely manicured nails dirty? Salon owner Lisa's not convinced. So where are you as far as fitness-wise goes? I am like your typical couch potato. I hate fitness. I hate exercise. I hate being hurt. Um, so, so is there anything you like? No, not uh, nothing at all. The only fitness I do is shopping. And the vibe's no better with Angela. So what's your um, experience or history of keeping fit? Uh, nothing, really. Nothing. Running-wise, history of running? I don't like running. No? No. So if I ever need you, you're usually shopping? Yeah. With Lisa is yeah. where you go. And you holiday together, you socialise yeah. together, drink together? Yeah. Is that a bit of a downfall, do you think, for the two of you? Um, probably, <laughs> probably. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. OK. So far, Alfie's got two shopaholics who'd rather drink than run. So what have Glamour Girls Cat and Betsam got to offer? Right, girls, what do you want to get from all this? Well, for me, I definitely want to become fitter. Right. Yeah. I want to give up my smoking. So you're one of so, the smokers? Yeah, I am one of the smokers. Yeah, get fitter, look better, isn't it? Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah that's I what feel... I want from it. Again, for me, it's to get a bit fitter. Um, I've only ran, I did the race for life, but I was drunk from the night before. <laughs> so to do something sober, <laughs> running, <laughs> and just to enjoy it, and I really can't imagine, I can't imagine myself doing the marathon. OK, so yeah. something you think that is right now in your life's totally impossible. Yeah, like there's no way. 13 miles is... It's a long that's way. That's a long, long way. Right, OK. Yeah, so. so you're both very, very glamorous, and I'm sure image has a lot to do with your lifestyle. It means a lot. So uh, <laughs> how do you feel you're going to cope with the training, the regime? Bum bag. Uh, We've bought a bum bag. Bought a bum bag for our lip gloss and bronzer. Uh, makeup to Leopard come with print. us. We'll be spray Leopard tanned print every bum week. bag. Yeah. So when we're running... We can touch up. All right. Yeah. Also. <laughs> oh, so... So maybe you're not trying to keep up fitness-wise, you're trying to keep... Uh, we've got a competition of yeah, glamour yeah. going on but here. But when you're fit and you're healthy, you look good, don't you? Yeah, you yeah. glow, you have a so natural it glow. With it, doesn't it? But you have, like, a natural glow. Yeah, but we're not that natural. There's lots of other fake bits, fake tan, <laughs> fake nails. Fake boobs. Fake boobs, yeah. So do you not feel that maybe by getting fit and maybe giving up smoking and cutting down the party and lifestyle, that the image may all of a sudden be not as relevant because you'll feel so good about yourself. Never. Really? Yeah. 100%. And what about makeup and everything when you're sweating? That's, That's why, why we need a bum bag. Out. Yeah. To top up. Right, OK. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the verdict, Alfie? It pains me to say, but I can't see them doing it. I really can't see them doing it because it seems like they care so much about so many other things that are, to me, pointless and meaningless. And the things that I find really relevant and important are pointless to them. So, you know, we're going to come to a point where one of us is going to have to fall. And I'm not going to be the one to fall. Alfie's final stop is the T. Gwynn Special Needs School in Cardiff. His third team of angels is made up of eight mums whose children all attend the school. T. Gwynn caters for up to 150 children, aged 3 to 19, all with profound and multiple learning difficulties. Hey, Liam. Hiya, yeah. Ah, uh, lovely Hi. to meet you. I'm Before he meets all eight mums, one of them, Hayley, 
has agreed to give Alfie a quick tour of the school. Obviously, school is a huge part of our lives. Huge support to us as parents. You know, aside from family, I would say this is probably the most important aspect of our lives. With an emphasis on learning through play, the whole school is geared towards stimulus and enrichment activities. Something Alfie can totally get on board with. This is a school of children with special needs, but ultimately it's a place of happiness. A one, two, three, go on, mwah. Yeah! <laughs> Every child is smiling, every teacher is smiling. Oh, is that nice? Is that nice? And you don't get that in many mainstream schools. You don't get that happiness. This school is an amazing, amazing place. Hello. Hello. How are you doing, girls? You Having right? toured the school, it's time to meet the mums on his team. First things first, he needs to resolve a bit of a dilemma. So there's, so there's eight got, of us all together. Oh, there's eight all together? Yeah. Oh, right, because oh, obviously there's only five we can fit in a team. So I thought what we'd do to start is real simple. No, if we all all lie on the floor, genuine, simple, because we have to get five. Seriously, lie on the floor, face down to do a press-up. Yeah, it's clean. Come on, I'm serious. I'm serious. So go on the floor in the press press up position. No, gee, I'm genuine now, I swear. I'll I'll There's room I'll over never here. Never. Come on, spit up, ladies. Jeez. Oh my goodness. Girls, you realise how stupid you all look right now. Get on your chairs! Get on your chairs! You knew it was too stupid. Ah, well, at least I know you're up for anything. At least I know you're up for anything. Anyway, I've been on a tour of the school and it's been absolutely fantastic. But then, on you lot then. The little I've learned so far, I can obviously imagine that the time taken up in your lives must be phenomenal. So to find the time to do this, how the hell are we going to do it? <laughs> and why the hell are you doing it? <laughs> OK, so why the hell are you doing it? I had a quite a busy job before I had kids, and since having four kids and my last one being disabled, I've just lost my confidence. I tried to go back to work, I couldn't do it. You become a bit of a recluse, so your body, not only is your body unfit, your mind and your head just all starts to go. And for me, it would be getting back a bit of my personality. That's it for me. It'd be a bit of an emotional journey, I think. It would, yeah. It'll be emotional. <laughs> if you have an emotional attachment to something, then you'll try so much harder. Mm -hmm. Do we have any anyone else with... But this is a real, real challenge for me. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because of, of the lack of sleep, grabbing what I can eat here, grabbing what I can eat there, and all of those obstacles yeah so it's trying to prioritize things as well yeah but if my my son's had a really bad night and he's had loads of seizures and he wakes up in the morning and he and he smiles and you think oh my god you know if he can smile mm. after the night that he's had and get on with his day mm. it's got to be this is something that i'm going to be able to do yeah mm. do you not look in the mirrors and think like that you're inspirational people to other people as well no. 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 Really? <laughs> I find that yeah, really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. You don't see yourself yeah. as a person anymore. You see yourself as a, as a, as a full-time no. carer yeah. and a mum yeah. and a nurse and a doctor and everything else that goes with it. Yeah. Impressed by the mums, it's only when Alfie talks to them about life outside of school that he begins to realise how challenging things really are. My son Dejan, he's been diagnosed with pervasive developmental disorder. It's on the spectrum of autism. He's eight. He has no speech. His mentality, I would say, is of a three-year-old. He's a happy boy, though. He is happy. Jonah, he's non-ambulant, so he can't walk, doesn't crawl, no speech. He's tube-fed, because he not because there's any thing physically wrong he just refuses to eat and he's recently been diagnosed with autism my son's got autism he's non-verbal and he's eight okay. and uh, got a lot of sensory issues and he self-harms sometimes Imogen is 10 years old uh, she was born with a rare genetic condition called Angelman syndrome she has profound and multiple learning difficulties she is non-verbal. She understands an awful lot, although there's no vocalisation. <laughs> I've got five children. Theo is my youngest. He has severe autism. He self-harms. He's non-verbal. Can be very, very unpredictable. He will throw himself to the floor, headbutt, pinch, bite, kick. I've got two children. My daughter's 14 and currently doing her GCSEs. 
and I've got an 11 year old son with special needs. He's got severe learning difficulties and epilepsy. I've got my little girl Emily who's nine. She's autistic yeah. but she has seizures as well. And then I've got my son who's 11, Scott, but he's in a wheelchair. He's a lot more severe than Emily. He can't walk, talk, feed himself, toilet himself. Both of mine have autism but they're very different. So my son's got no speech whatsoever, but he understands everything you say and he's quite chilled and calm. Okay. And then I've got Charlotte, my daughter. <laughs> she's a real character and she's got speech, but you couldn't really have a conversation with her, but she can let you know what she wants. Are they finished? Finished. 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 Okay. Every day is different. You don't know what is going to happen. You become isolated because we can't, we can't go bowling, we can't go to the cinema, we can't go in a restaurant, we can't go even in shops with him. But do you get a worry every single day? Yeah. Are you? Yeah. yeah. Are you always kind of on always. edge? Always. Yeah. Always. For a phone call or? Always. You kind of do it. You have to get on. That's just your life. You know. I really don't know how I learn to cope with it, but you do, and you have to. We've got to be strong for our kids. I've just kind of got used to it, really. Um, this is my life and this is what I've got to deal with. I don't really dwell on it. It is what it is and you've just got to cope with it, really. So given the daily trials these ladies face, why would they want to put themselves through the torture of training for a half marathon? I don't know, I think it's come to a point in my life where, well, like, one, the fitness, I want to make sure I'm fit and healthy, and two, I think that it would make, put me in a better place to do better for my family yeah. if I could do something for myself. Getting fit is actually a big thing, yeah. isn't it? So we can stay fit yeah. and strong for longer, because yeah. I do worry about what happens when we get old and who's going to look after him. I think the next 16 weeks we can do, definitely, <laughs> and, and even the half marathon, although it sounds ridiculous because I can't even run down the road, but right. that I think I can do. What scares me is not sticking with it. Yeah. And this is where I get emotional because we have to. Because mm. yeah. our kids run, they're impulsive, they lose control in public places, you have to be able to keep up with them. Yeah. We're getting older, your joints are going, your ankles are going, your feet hurt. Don't know what the future holds, can't think about that. But for now, we've got to chase them. Yeah. So we've got to be well. We've got to yeah. be mentally well as well, you know. Look at the state of me. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the state of me. <laughs> oh. It's not often that I'm, I'm lost for words. But I tell her why, if it's done one thing for me, it's, it's stirred my emotion. I'd love to be able to say right now that I have no doubt that these people will be able to do it. But these women in particular, uh, not their lifestyle choice, but the life they have to live is so much taken up by other people that for them to find the time to do something for themselves is going to be the challenge. I'm honoured that I can be a part of it and I want to see them succeed because if anybody deserves it, this group of women do. So three teams of angels for the TV series. The mums, the nurses and the nail bar girls with another 17 teams to make up Alfie's 100. And ahead of them all, a long, hot summer of sweat, sprains, and tears. Go, 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 go! Let's get it started. It's a race! Next time on Alfie's Angels. It's a race! Oh, I'm dying! No, 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 no. It's no pain, no gain, as the Angels attempt to go from cake to 5K in just 28 days. It's worth it to have a snog off of Alfie. Yeah. Oh, come <laughs> Alfie fumes at the smokers. I'm looking at you like that, and you've just got your head down. You're not even looking, you're not even listening to her. I am. You're not, Beth. You sit in here and you're just paying lip service. Come on! And all hundred angels get kicking. Fabulous! And the training continues at the same time next week here on BBC One Wales. Next tonight, a serious sporting fixture. Ladies darts, a grudge match not to be missed with the Queen Vic Pink Ladies in action. EastEnders after the latest news headlines. <laughs>